Have you ever gone on a coffee date with a man who's served hard time in prison? No. <laughs> I have. You've had a lot of dating disasters. <laughs> <laughs> they're married and masquerading like they're single on dating apps. And it's inspired me to stay off the dating apps, honestly. You're an inspiration to me because you are not addicted to dating apps. It has been years since I've been consistent on the apps. They tend to do more harm than good in my life. I always thought that dating apps, you should be putting your best face forward. Yeah. <laughs> not your worst body part on line. Well, I like have the shirtless pick in front of the truck. It just gives me the ick. At my age, I don't have a lot of options of men's profiles popping up on my dating app. That's probably the difference between dating at your age and dating at my age. I don't think I have a lot of options either because nobody knows how to talk to each other anymore. So it's frustrating and I don't want it to be my fairy tale story that I met somebody on a dating app. Hi, I'm Debbie. I'm Caitlin. Welcome to our new podcast, Dating at Her Age. I'm 29 years old and I'm just trying to survive the dating world. Caitlin, we're all trying to survive the dating world and I'm 57 years old. Oh, she's dating at her age? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's called Dating at Her Age. Oh, those poor things. Hi, I'm Debbie Dujanovic. And I'm Caitlin Johnston. And welcome to Dating at Her Age. It's our very first episode, Caitlin, and I love the concept of our podcast because we are light years apart in age. I am 57 years old. And I'm, you? I'm 29 years old, and we're both on this journey together just at different points in our lives. And I think there are a lot of different perspectives we can each learn from each other. There's so many things to talk about in the crazy world of dating. We're going to start off strong by talking about the disaster zone that I have encountered on dating apps with the guys I've met. I mean... I don't know if other women are going through this, but I have literally sat across the table on coffee dates from men who have seen the inside of prison cells. <laughs> They've served time, and I don't figure that out until after I leave the, the date. I've got so many different stories to tell, and I know you've had a lot of frustrations on them as well. Yeah, I just personally, stories like that are why I have reservations on the dating apps, and I don't find myself on them very often. I know that it is a big resource for dating, so I'm probably, that might be why I'm still single, but I just don't necessarily want that to be my story, uh, my love story. And I felt that way ever since dating apps launched, oh, you whenever that was. But since I was younger, I was like, eh, that kind of oh. sounds dumb. But I know it works out for a lot of people. Well, so I'm not totally discounting their relationships. It just kind of feels off for me. That's Doesn't seem right. Yeah, that's curious to me um, because you grew up in a generation where online is a thing. Yeah, I was, I was a bridge. I'm a millennial. So I grew up as a child without tech, a lot of technology. And then it kind of inserted itself in my life as I was a teenager. So it was like, oh, dating apps are this cool, fun thing. And well, for whoever was interested in them, I guess I never really felt that way. But it was a nice resource to connect with people. And now I just feel like it's kind of toxic. I don't know. It just seems icky. Well, and I didn't, there were no dating apps when right. I was your age. Um, they didn't come along till after my divorce. And this is just a whole new world that I'm trying to get used to. And I have not done a great job navigating it at all. Yeah. Um, I've been on them on and off them for six and a half years. And I thought dating apps would open the gates for me to meet my forever love. And quite frankly, the opposites happen. Yeah. The great thing about dating apps for me, honestly, is the crazy stories that I have to tell. Um, and I come into work because we work together at KSL News Radio in Salt Lake City. Um, I host um, a show that you are the lead producer on, the David Dujanovic Show. And you have heard so many of my nightmare <laughs> stories mm -hmm. that one day you turned to me and you said, we need to do a podcast. Yeah. Well, I said, you need to do a podcast. <laughs> I said, you have so much knowledge in your brain, uh, just even like safety stuff. And you teach me stuff every day. I'm like, I didn't think about that. That's a great safety tip. But then you have these stories because you do put yourself out there and you try and you date. And I'm just like, yeah, this is why I don't go out there. But and I just think that you have so much other people can benefit from by listening. And then I happen to just keep talking to you. And then we ended up as co-hosts. So because I'm I'm navigating the dating world from kind of a different time in my life and there's there's just a lot of different aspects to it so let's launch our very first uh, episode of dating at her age mm, poor thing uh, <laughs> with the disaster zone that I've uh, found myself in for the last several years I've got so many stories I cannot wait to share with you I don't know if you've heard all of them not, probably not all of them no but my 
goodness, I never anticipated that this was um, going to be, you know, the, I never anticipated that these were going to be the types of stories I was telling about my experiences on dating apps. I literally thought when I jumped on dating apps that I would, I'd be married by now to some guy I met on a dating app. That can be further for the truth. That is not how things have worked mm-hmm. out. Um, and then we'll talk about what bugs us the most when we're swiping through men's profiles about what they do on their dating profiles and what they don't do. And then I found a story, Caitlin, where men are going off on women's dating profiles and giving us all kinds of advice. So we'll dive into that. I'm actually excited for that. I know we all need to be accountable and we can't just bash men for things when we all probably have issues as well. But so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. One of my favorite parts of the show is something you came up with, the dater hater uh, segment of the show where every week uh, we play a phone call from one of our listeners uh, to who tell us about their dating horror story. Yeah, I'm really excited. I think that there's so many stories out there and people may need a place to to release them and we can react and talk about this and hopefully help other people out by avoiding t- horror stories, I guess. <laughs> okay, I want to get right into your disaster stories, so go off. <laughs> These are all true stories. All men I've met on dating apps. I have met most of the guys I've gone out with in the last few years I've met on, on dating apps. I've been set up on a couple of like blind dates or dates through friends, but these are these are all men I've connected with on dating apps. So oh my goodness, where do I even begin? <laughs> Caitlin, I have a stack of stories that are just Oh, I'm, I'm, sometimes I'm embarrassed by it. Other times I'm frustrated by it. And then sometimes I just have to don't sit, be, but I don't have be to laugh. Yeah, don't I be embarrassed. I have to laugh. Okay. So I connected with this one guy on a dating app um, and I decided, uh, I think I was just super busy and I decided, you know, coffee would probably be the best uh, route. Uh, I would just go meet him for a coffee date uh, one day after work. So I got off of the radio show, ran over and met him for um, a quick cup of coffee and I could tell the whole time we were talking, he was, he just seemed really fidgety and nervous. And I, at first I thought, oh, it's just, you know, dating nerves. We all get them. But he was also very jumpy because we mm-hmm. sat out in like kind of like a a patio area. And every time a car drove by or anything like that, he was just really jumpy. And in my head, I thought, I think this man has spent time in prison. See, that's where your brain goes, which I mean, I, this is learning. Like you should always be thinking of that. I probably wouldn't have thought that. I would have just been like, what's going on, guy? Like, no, it was like, <laughs> it was, it was as though like a car would kind of rev or drive by. And in my mind, I'm like, he's reacting like a prison cell yeah. door is slamming shut. Yeah. Um. So. Anyways, wrapped up the coffee date, ran home, um, called up a friend of mine who knows. Uh, I, I, I We'll talk about this later because I've done a lot of, uh, I do my own DIY background checks because I've been a news reporter yeah. for so long. I know I know where to look for things. But I actually called a friend of mine and asked her to help me out um, as I was driving home. And by the time I got home, she said, are you sitting down? Uh, and she said uh, he, he was charged at one point um, with attempted murder. Yeah. <laughs> Run for the hills. And he'd serve time. Yeah. He'd serve time. Um, so so I was I'm thinking, I was at coffee with a man who tried to take the life of another human. Yeah. And honestly, this could be so common because there's no way dating apps can vet that. So it's just yeah, this is this is why I'm scared of dating apps in a lot of ways. You never know who you're talking to. And this is why I stick to coffee dates yes. in the middle of the afternoon yep. and I don't Hop in somebody's car because yeah. this guy's a perfect stranger to me. Never like do that. Most people are on dating apps. Rarely do I connect with anybody I know on a dating app. Yeah, I was like, well, at least I, it was a coffee date. I wasn't in the same car with him. I met him at the place. It was 45 minutes. So guess what I said when he asked me for a second date? What? No. <laughs> I said, no, no. Here's what I said. I texted back. I'm sorry, I just didn't feel the connection I was looking for. Valid response. That that's fine. That's how that's actually how I think a lot of people should say that, even if they don't have a prison history. <laughs> but Okay, yeah. but I'm not done with my No, no, no. You've I'm not more. done with my parolees. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that's the only one I've heard of, actually. So you've got you a lot of know about this other story. I don't know the other ones. I don't think so. I felt uh, funny about this other guy that I had been talking to on a dating app. I just something felt off. I didn't know what um 
oh, here's another thing that I do is I get their name, their full name before I meet them. Which so, is smart. Right. Because yep. I have to send it to my, you know, my mm-hmm. surveillance posse. Yeah. I've got, I've got my friends who are on the, my surveillance team watching my location, but they also have to have mm-hmm. his name in case something happens yeah. to me. Right. So I'm going to lunch with this guy, middle of the day, meeting him there. Thank goodness. Um, and before I go, I look up his name because I'm able to, you know, look up court records. And again, I do it for my job. So mm-hmm. I'm like, well, I be, ought to be doing this for my personal life too. Something just felt, like I said, off about uh, our communication, which was a red flag. Probably shouldn't have even bothered to meet him. But at this point, I'm desperate, right? I'm like, now I'm approaching mid-50s. There's nobody Don't out there. Don't be desperate. But yeah, I get what you're saying. <laughs> the the pool of options is so thin that when one does come along, I'm like, mm, maybe this is my Prince Charming. So I, I, I look him up online, and he spent time in prison for fraud. Fraud. Do you know what I did? It's better than murder. Attempted <laughs> murder, I guess. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> do you know what I didn't do? I did not call him up and say, hey, um, I just, I don't know. I, I feel really sick. I just, my a fever just spiked to like 103 degree. I know. I went, yeah. I went and sat down and had lunch with this guy. Well, I mean, fraud... What's the context? But if it's prison, I think we're probably not doing well. So well, I'm all about giving people second chances. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I just I, I just don't want to date. If there's any somebody. sort of history, like or any record, I'd be like, OK, maybe not. Yeah, the, <laughs> I, I'm just I just don't I don't see dating somebody with a rap sheet. Yeah, you shouldn't have to do that. At well, all. The thing that was extra baffling to me is when I when I looked up his, his record. He done it twice. Yeah, okay. He, that, he wasn't even good at that. Done. He got caught. <laughs> he's he's a times. liar. That shows that just shows a part of his personality and it will not work anyways. So then there was this guy. I connected with him when I was on a road trip, actually. I was uh wait, on wait, a road wait, for wait. vacation. What happened? You went oh. on a date with the guy? So the okay. fraud guy? Oh, the fraud guy. Yeah, we went out to lunch with him. And did you just have a conversation and then did, I don't know, what happened after that? Um, after we parted ways, I, he sent me one message and I think I responded out of courtesy because okay. I'm not a jerk and I never heard back from him. All right. He made that I easy for you. I think he probably knew <laughs> that I knew. Okay. You know, I just. He I knew d- you were too smart. To like look into he, he, he that you looked into him, I guess. Yeah, I, I'm just always curious if I if I would have stayed, um, you know, like if we would have become an item or we would have dated. At what point? At right. what point do they tell you, "Hey, look, I have something to tell you. I have a rap sheet." Yeah, is that a deal breaker for you? You know, I mean, it would have to be something that happens right away, yeah. in my view. I don't think I'd want to be strung along for six months, falling in love with somebody, and then tell them, "Hey, by the way." I made some really bad choices, uh, not once, but mm-hmm. twice, uh, or I'm, you know, I, I tried to take somebody's life, uh, you know, or <laughs> I committed insurance fraud and I was really bad at it. The authorities caught me twice. I mean, what a point do you, does that conversation come up? So, but anyway, didn't have to worry about it because he made it easier. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then there's a guy I connected with when I was on a road trip. Uh, I thought, oh, this, there's a lot of hope. He's a school teacher. Um, either retired or about to be retired and it's long distance because I I live in Utah and he lives in another state but we're going we've decided we've been talking now we now we're calling each other so it's going going on for you know a couple like a couple of weeks and we're going to meet and he wants me to fly to him I think this is a red flag yeah he wants me to book the flight and I'm going to book the hotel because I'm not staying with the guy so I'm you know, going to be for five hundred dollars into this. Yeah, no, that's not worth it to me. Well, thankfully he did himself in because he called me, and I mean everybody knows who Oprah Winfrey is, right? I would hope so. Right? Okay, <laughs> like she's right iconic, and that she's been in a you know forever relationship with her her boyfriend uh, Stedman. I guess significant I, other. I, yeah, okay, I do know that. <laughs> no, okay, Stedman. I mean, I, feel yeah. I, I grew up watching the Oprah Winfrey yeah. show, and Stedman was, we, you just heard about Stedman. I didn't even see the guy, but we just like knew she was dating Stedman. So this guy calls me up, and he says, uh, just before I'm ready to, like a couple days before I'm going to fly and meet him, he says, um, 
I'm re- you know, I'm retiring or I retired from my career teaching and I'm um, really looking forward to meeting you. I'm super excited to get to know each other. You can be my Oprah and I will be your Stedman. Hmm. I mean, that's kind of cute. What? <laughs> I, mean, I thought I knew that. I got cute. scared. I okay. That's I guess. Yeah. He was insinuating that he was gonna yeah. move in. Well, I guess. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> like move. Uh, it's like he wanted to move into my home before we'd ever met. Right. Okay. Now that you're explaining that more, I'm like, yeah, I would run away, run from the hills. <laughs> yeah. I just. I. I was like, this is just. Is this was. Is this what dating apps are all about? I don't know if that's dating. It's just, yeah, I mean, it gives people access to do that and communicate in that way and find, and yeah, I guess it opens that up more. On another date, um, I went skiing with a guy, you know, Utah's known for its awesome ski resorts. I'm not a great skier. I used to be a much better skier, but I haven't skied in a few years. I don't know what was going through my head when I decided, said, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. We should go on the Black Diamond runs together and see uh-huh. if we can out-ski each other at Solitude or Brighton Ski Resort. So uh, we end up at one of the ski resorts. Uh, he'd invited me. He'd invited me skiing. I don't know what the protocol is for who pays in that situation. He pays. If he invited you, he pays. Or you pay for yourself, and he pays for himself. I get there. I get there, and he's like, okay, I'll wait for you right here while you go pay for your ski pass. So here's the problem with this date. I mean, first of all, it's like I'm out like 130 bucks. Yeah, those are expensive. That's something you figure out before. That was a half-day yeah. pass, too. It's That's a, that's a big thing expense don't go skiing on a first date you're stuck don't. on a chairlift with a dude yeah don't 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 do it you're stuck on a chairlift with a dude what if he kills you <laughs> like that's literally where my mind just went you're out in the middle of no not in the middle of nowhere but you can right. be alone in them you're like, pretty on the high slopes. Up. yeah you're he can pretty... push you off the lift like that's scary i would so, never do that as a first date it really that experience became more of a therapy session for him because he mm-hmm. just wanted to complain about his exes oh so I'm stuck on a chairlift, and chairlifts um, from the base up to the you know top of the mountain is about a 15 minute ride. And then there were the times when the chairlift stopped because somebody like un- inevitably somebody up ahead falls when they get off the chairlift, mm-hmm. and so the chairlift just stops. I'm like, yeah, this is the worst first date ever. And then you can't just click off your skis and run down the hill real quick to get You're away stuck. from the guy. You're stuck. Yeah, this is why you do like the quick coffee date or the quick little meetup. Uh, that does not take up your entire day and you're not trapped. Good lesson. <laughs> there was a guy that stood me up off a dating app. Happens. That happens. That we seems... talked for like a week and uh, we were going to go on a dinner date. I was really excited because I hadn't been on a dinner date in ages. And I thought, this feels like a real date. It feels legit. It feels like maybe he's going to pay for it. That would be incredible. Wow. And then as we were building up into like the hour or two before the date, didn't hear from him, didn't hear from him, didn't hear from him. He contacted Rude. me well after the date, you know, eh, time's up, and he wanted to reschedule. I've never understood why people stand people up. Like, what, why? Why put in the effort and just leave people hanging? I got stood up once because they got arrested for selling drugs. What? But I don't, so he didn't stand me up, but yes, he, did. he disappeared because he got arrested for selling drugs. This is when I was younger. Probably shouldn't have been talking to the person, but he was. it wasn't even on dating apps. It was just like communication, communicating through text and stuff. And then I was like, oh, okay, I can just meet you. And then whatever. I was like driving around and I sat there for a while and I was like, what happened? I just got stood up by this guy that I kind of didn't even care about. I was just like, I was just going to meet him for, and I, I had met him before, but meet him, meet up and just hang out with him. And then like, I got a text from his mom, like a couple days later, like saying that, oh, he apologized, he got in trouble and he just wanted to make sure that you knew he didn't just stand you up. And I was like, at least he did that, (laughs) which was nice. But yeah, that was, it was, that's the only time I've kind of experienced that. I've been ghosted before, but like after. So have you, have you, did you see him after that at all? I did see him after that because I felt like I he could ha- give me an explanation. I didn't mind. I didn't really talk to him much after that, though. We did, like, hang out once. But it was not meant to be. He was not my type, obviously. Like, I dodged a bullet there. I think I was just young and naive, and I was like, this person's talking to me. I can, you know, see. I was trying to date for, like, the first time, 
And so I just like talked, I was just talking to him and then, yeah, tried to meet him. Well, that's a vanished. The, not the personality that I should have been with. So, Well, what's always also surprising to me about dating apps is how many men I've connected with. And I've lost count of how many on dating apps on a first date who then message me after and said, you know, thanks a lot for meeting me. It was great to get to know you. But I just, while I was sitting there talking to you, I kind of discovered that I'm really not ready to start dating. And yeah. I think what they meant to text me was, I'm not ready to start dating you. Probably. Yeah. And I mean, I do, I can kind of feel that though, because sometimes I feel like people are like putting themselves out there and trying, and then they just put themselves into a situation with someone like you who might be wanting something serious down the road. And it kind of makes them realize I can't give myself to this person because I still have stuff to work on. I thought I was ready, but I'm not. Or it's something like that. <laughs> so I'm fall head over heels with somebody I met on a dating app. I I would like to know that they haven't spent time in prison. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be stood up. I don't want to be ghosted. I have had so many bad experiences on dating apps. I kind of wonder why I'm still on them. Yeah, I don't know. Have you have you ever had a good experience? <laughs> I, I would hope have. so. I've okay. had a couple where I've connected with men who I really like that are great guys. Um, for one reason or another, it's just not going to work into something that's a long-term relationship. But I was one guy that I uh, connected with, and right away he wanted to meet me, which I appreciated. We weren't becoming, you know, text buddies on a, mm -hmm. on the dating app without getting to know each other in person. So we met right away. We connected. I, we went on some great dates together, and it was really fun, and I enjoyed it. Just a didn't work out. That's okay. But that's okay. And yeah. you're putting yourself out there and you're getting, honestly, you're learning from a lot of these other experiences. So I do think that it could still just bridge connections. Like there are pros to dating apps because it is hard to meet people. They can be overwhelming and they can also feel very shallow to me. That's what I, why a big reason I don't like them. But I do think that it has brought a lot of people together. So I, my little brother found his fiance on a dating app in his college years. I think there's a big difference there um when you're in college people are on the apps i and think stuff. there is but too. i do know a lot of people who have met on apps and they're they're fine and they're happy but i just like it just doesn't feel right to me <laughs> so but i'm glad you have one a good experience I, my experiences on apps aren't necessarily negative for the most part but they can be really like icky like there can be hookup culture on there and i think people are just they don't put a lot of effort into what they do on dating apps and it just seems like we're so accessible all the time and that's just really not the case and sometimes people just want too much communication, and that just means we're not on the same page. Like the last conversation I had on a dating app, we were like, he, I could tell he was wanting in-depth discussion. I actually really like that. I love, you know, knowledgeable things, intelligent conversations. I like that. It was a little too much for me in the moment, and he was double messaging me when I took too long to respond because I'm busy. I don't have a lot of time to just sit on an app, and that's not how I do things. And so he kept double messaging me, and I was like, he's like... It's too much for me, and that just is probably something about myself, but I think it was, yeah, they're very overwhelming to me, and I was like, just don't double message me. Like, I have time allotted to these apps when I'm on them, and it's not 24-7. <laughs> what has been your experience um, in terms of um, communication with men, you know, who are in your dating age range on dating apps? Has like, it been pretty positive, how... or do you get, like, weird <laughs> messages? Or... All of the above. All of the above. It's as I've gotten a little older, I think that some people are a little bit more mature and can have deeper conversations and whatnot. But I think it's all like previously, like I haven't been on Tinder in years and I, I think I need to redownload it to just see what it's like there now. But that one turned into like a cesspool of just hookup culture and disgusting things. Like I did not like that one at all after a while because that was like the first big app. And now it's just like from what I remember it being toxic. Like I said, haven't been on there for a while. Maybe they've changed and it's different, but. I've, I've tried to stay off of that one. But other times people can have meaningful conversations. And if they're just, and I think if people are open and transparent and willing to be open to communication, stuff like that, it can be great. But other people are short and closed off. And it's just, yeah, it can be all, it depends on the person. At my age, um, I, you know, I'm on Bumble mainly and I've been on Hinge in the past. But at my age, there's very few options mm -hmm. uh, for men to, you know, swipe right on, 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 on these dating apps. And I think it's just my age demographic, but what's it like for you? Uh, are there a lot of, a lot of men to connect with? And do you, do you get a connection? So. Yeah, I do get connections. I see a lot of people on there. I don't know if they're all like, you know, my 
person, right? Like I don't always connect with them, but I do see a lot of people on there. I get engagement and stuff like that. So I could, I can see that um, maybe people are, who are older might not be on the apps because it's not how they're used to doing things, even though that is kind of where things are at. Point. I think that that's the case. I do think that there are a lot of people that could be for you. And same with my generation, because I feel that way that I don't like being on the apps. And I think more of us are really craving the in-person connection because we've been stuck in the digital world for so long and we really just want to get back to that. So I think the people that we may be looking for might not be on the apps. Maybe they are. But I think we're if we all feel this way, we might all just be out here with our hands tied, not knowing what to do, trying to find each other. So, Do you get ghosted a lot or do you ghost? I ghosted the last guy because I got overwhelmed on accident. I just forgot to respond, but it's because my brain. And that's why I'm like, I am bad at them. I don't think that I'm great. And I maybe that's just something I need to work on, but... I, I have been ghosted, um, but as I said, I try not to get on the apps very often, so it's been a while since I've had like a recent experience, because I think I was the one who stopped responding last time. I'm just l- l- realizing this. He'd already worn you down. Well, and it wasn't even that bad. I just felt like I kept, like, I was responding, but then, like, if I didn't respond by the next, like, by six hours, which that's a long time, right? But if I was, my window to respond to someone during the week is like after five o'clock maybe if my brain can handle it and I'm better on the weekends but my mind is so overwhelmed all the time that I can't sit and do that do that but then he would be like looking forward to talking more if you're interested and he said it multiple times after I just took like a little bit of time to respond but it's like I'm not I don't have a lot of note I try to turn the notifications off during the day because I can't be distracted by that because we're busy so that might be a me problem it might very well be but I at that point Like, just let's meet in person or whatever, and let's see how this goes, because I don't think I like the whole texting thing. But yeah, as I said, it's just, it's all over the map. It's it's good perspective in reverse, too. If if I'm the one feeling kind of like out there because some guy isn't responding to me, maybe it's because he's busy. And that's something I've I've learned a lot over the years, because I... I have, you know, had a lot of different experiences and I think that I maybe have been not saying that I'm too much, but just knowing kind of where people are are at and what they're able to give. Like not everybody has the bandwidth to be uh, accessible all the time. And I think the digital age has kind of changed that. Like we have this perception, like I can talk to this person at any point in time because we have a cell phone, which we can, but I don't have to respond immediately if my mind is not there Yes, if you're prioritizing dating, that should be a priority and you probably do want to be more attentive to it, which it is a it's a it's becoming a priority in my life now, but it's not something that I can give all of my energy to because we are very busy people and we have a, a show we run every day, you know, and it, so my mind is all over the place with all of these different things in my own life and things I'm trying to build. So, yeah, and I I don't know. Maybe that's that's a me thing. I I'm curious to know how many it's other people feel that. It's not a you thing. I I've I've um you know been when I'm on Bumble or Hinge it sometimes it takes me quite a while to get back to somebody. I can sometimes just completely forget and I'm on those dating and apps I and I forget to check the messages. I think that's okay. Like it's a dating app. Like we I it's like social media for me like time my time is allotted to it. At certain points of the day I'm not on it all the time. And then if it gets to the point where we are establishing more of a relationship but I don't think you even have to talk every single day, like once or twice a week, but then go on a date and like after a week or two, whatever, and then go from there. But I just, I can't sit and text on my phone all day. Maybe I can, and I just haven't found the right person I want to talk to, <laughs> but I, I'm not there yet. So so straight ahead, let's talk about um, what bugs us about men's profiles. Okay. Um, you know, you said that the topless photos in front of trucks. Topless. <laughs> Yeah. Or was it shirtless? I don't know. It just sounded weird when you said that about a guy. <laughs> but just like, I don't know, just the, the, the manly man photo with the shirt off. Okay. Like, keep it contained. The one where you're posing in front of the mirror. All right. We've got our lists next. Hi, it's Debbie. And make sure you follow our Dating at Her Age podcast. In an upcoming episode, I'm going to teach you how I do my DIY background checks. That's right. I have my own do-it-yourself method to background check men who I date. Why? Well, because I don't want to date another guy with a rap sheet. I'm going to teach you how I do it in an upcoming episode. Welcome back to Dating at Her Age. I'm Caitlin. And I'm Debbie. And we are so excited to get into this next part of our first episode as we walk through what we 
hate about men's dating profiles. Yeah, I'm in the disaster zone when it comes to dating. So let's start with uh, what about dating apps stink? You want me to go first or you to go first? You go first. You've got a lot, a long list, and I've, I've, got, I've got thoughts, but yours, yours are unique. My lake is shallow. My lake yeah. of choices is is really, really shallow shallow at my age. I'm 57 years old, and I showed you. Yeah. I've shown you, as I'm thumbing through Bumble, what my options Mm -hmm. are. And some of these men are a good 10, 12 years older than I am because I have my age parameters set up so wide. Because if I don't have my age parameters set up 10 years younger than I am and 10 years older, I get nobody. Right. I get no choices, and then yeah. I, I feel super sad. And I do get quite a bit of choices. Um, not everybody, you know, will match with me and stuff, but it's a little overwhelming for me, not not to make that sound conceited or anything, but it's just the differences in age. And I it makes me wonder, I don't, I do think there are a lot of people out there d- wanting to date your age. They just may not all be on the apps because of just different, you know, priorities and how they want to meet people so i don't know but that's just something i think of it makes me feel bad for people trying to connect though because it is a lot harder these days let me try to take you on the adventure (laughs) uh, uh, being on a dating app at my age and tell you what i dislike most what i think is the worst part of being on any dating app Uh, and the first one i'm gonna i'm the first one to bring up is and i think i've figured out the hack to this so i'm going to tell you what the hack is and it's a super simple solution to but Men who use run-on sentences for their first name, like, tell you later. I have never even seen this on mine. (laughs) That's why I'm just like, what? yours are unique. And I'm like, I don't know if I've seen this. Let me give you another one. I've seen a man's name on a dating profile listed as whatchamacallit. I have never seen this on apps. At least I don't think I have. (laughs) People just say their name. Yeah, I mean, maybe I'm just seeing different people, but I've people just put their name on there. From like what I see. Brian or Ted. Yeah, maybe it's not their real name, but they don't put like a phrase. That's one of the things I dislike most about dating apps. I wish they would be required to put a real name on their profile. It's constant. It just says their name. <laughs> I, I was on the dating app today and I saw one man after the other using like some made up name. First of all, I don't like that the dating apps allow anybody to upload a profile Mm -hmm. without an actual first name. I don't know what the techie solution is to that, but it bugs me. I don't want to see somebody's first name that isn't a real name. Right. I don't know if they think it's cute. Well, anyone can, maybe it's a conversation starter, but I wouldn't be interested in, I don't think I'd care. Like, I just want to know your name. What's a conversation starter? Yeah. What's a conversation starter? what's your name? I saw you said you'll tell me later, but I'd see, I don't think it's a strong one. So my hack to this is I swipe left. I don't even give them a a chance. They should put a little more effort into this. (laughs) So my, my thought process of being on a, you know, these dating apps with these, you know, any man who has created a fake profile name they're they're on the lam from the law yeah they're on the lam they're they're on the run from the law yeah, there's a warrant out for their us? arrest which is a, a female i mean i'm not really putting my last name out there so i guess it doesn't really matter but like i you i could see how someone could be concerned for you know safety but like you can there's they're not going to not everyone's going to search you and stuff, but I, I could see a safety thing, but I don't think that that's the reason. That's There's an underlying reason there. The uh, second thing that I that I do not like about a dating app profile is um, any sort of photos that uh, disguise their faces. So yeah. these are the men point? have a hard time taking a clear selfie of themselves, and I cannot figure out At why. At your age. At my age. And some at my age, but I get pretty... Do you have cl- it? No, I mean, it depends, but most guys my age have pretty good photos there because we're we grew up in this generation of social media and picture taking not i'm not going to say every single person because they're just people who aren't doing that but yeah there's like high quality pictures on a lot of mine i am shocked at how many men my age have no clue how to take a selfie they may just be trying their best they i would also suggest that they don't upload it if it's yeah. not a clear maybe photo. ask someone to help so in this category there are three things uh that i i don't tolerate on a dating app and i immediately swipe left mm-hmm. and that is the, the underwater snorkeling photos <laughs> with their face obscured if, i just i can't see your face and then yeah. there's one right after the other like What's and then the, the next point? photo is far away and then the next photo is of a group photo and so I don't know which one you are. Mm-hmm. I, I think this is a safety issue for women, and I'm going to yeah. tell you why. I think what men have figured out, and I hope women know this, and this is what I do with any profile photo on a dating app, because I'm looking at the 
photo on my phone, most likely, I will grab a screenshot out of it, download it to my photos, and then, you know, the reverse image search Mm -hmm. on Google, which is brilliant. It's right there on the Google search bar. There's a little camera off to the right side of the... people should, if they don't know about this, utilize it. (laughs) This is a great tip. Yeah. Um, It... You can upload that photo from your camera roll on your phone and Google will spit out whether that photo is being used in fake dating profiles, mm-hmm. if it belongs to somebody else. Um, and I use that and I and religiously and I think men and some of these fake profiles even have figured out that an obscure photo of them underwater right. with a, a snorkeling mask on is not going to turn up any results on these Google image searches. Mm-hmm. I don't even, I don't even give it a, a shot. I don't risk it. If I can't see a clear photo of them uh, or um, a close up photo of their actual face, I'm out. How about you? Yeah. I mean, yes, it does not happen to me as often, but yeah, I agree. Like, what's the point? Like I, it's, it's shallow to talk about, like you're just judging off of an image, but that is what dating apps are in all honesty at the first, like, look, you're looking at their pictures. I mean, I like scrolling through and reading more about them, obviously, because that's how you know, like what you're going to connect with. But even just in dating in real life, the first instinct is their appearance and that it seems shallow, but that's what it is. So if you're just going to hide that why are you doing that? It's just kind of, what's the point? What I love about uh, the concept of our podcast, Dating at Her Age, is that we're two totally separate. We're in two, t- I mean, mm-hmm. we're light years apart in age. I'm late 50s, you're late 20s, and we have t- completely different experiences on dating apps. You know, we have a much different situation going on with 50-something-year-olds. Um, mm-hmm. You know, a, a lot are still still married. You yeah. know, they're, and hopefully they're not on dating apps, and that's certainly one of my, I cannot stand it, when a man who is married jumps on a dating app when they're out of town and they try to hook up with women um, when mm-hmm. they're out of town, and they pretend, they fake, they lie, that they're not married. And so anybody, that's another one of my... Yeah. That's one of my automatic swipe left. I have nothing to do with mm-hmm. these guys who are either on like a travel mode, if that's even a thing. Um, I see it from time to time on Bumble. I will not connect with them. Uh, or, um, you know, like they're at the airport. I'm like, just turn off your dating app, dude. I don't want to have anything to yeah. do with you. To me, that is a red flag that they are in a long-term relationship. They're married. Shopping and they're around. just. <laughs> Exactly. And I, that's something I can experience, too, because you never know what people are doing off of the apps. Like, I've, I've known friends of mine that are well, not really friends of mine, people that I've known that are married that have been caught on dating apps. So I know that this is something that happens at every age. I'm it's just, just gonna, a cheater. Yeah, <laughs> cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. Okay. The, the last one I'm going to give, and I can't wait to get to yours, um, is age corrections in the bio. I've never experienced this. Oh, Caitlin. Wait till you're my age. <laughs> age corrections in the bio. So this is what I've seen for years. Uh, and it's probably less frequent than the blurry photos or the, the shirtless photos with them holding a fish. You know <laughs> what I mean? That's a, that's, that's a whole nother. Yeah. It happens way too often, too. I know. By the way, I swipe left on those because I'm just like, ugh, <laughs> ugh please. Um, age correction in the bio. What is that all about? And why do I hate it so much? They will put, you know, on my dating profile, it says I'm 57. It's very, very clear. So let's say I, I, in my age, like in my, it's probably too, too much bandwidth of ages because I'm older. You know, like I said, I'm trying to like catch more options. I'll go up to 67 years old and down to 47. I've since backed off that. I think I'm now at about 52 years old. So 52 to Mm -hmm. 67 years old. I will see age that so let's say they they put um, in in their age comes up as 52. So underneath their name, it comes up as they're 52 years old. I'm like, oh, that's that's awesome. And what they'll say, though, embedded in their actual the, the, the written bio part is sorry, the app won't let me correct it but when it I will. for <laughs> you can change that. Like, that's the, just dumb. <laughs> And they're older. Yeah. So I think what they're actually... They're manipulating the algorithm. Yes. Mm-hmm. What do you know about that? that well, I just like you know you're, you're I about. think you were alluding to that. But yeah. like they're, the app 
more is goes off of a range. It get you can well, I'm just like hinged. So they're trolling for younger women. You can pick your age range that you want to go, but I assume that the app, if you are mm-hmm. marking this as your age, they're going to feed you a specific range that's closer sure. to that. But I don't. I mean, I don't know uh, for he, sure, but that's my assumption. Uh, what I thought was happening is that they're saying they're younger than they are. Mm-hmm. Let's say they're really sixty years old. They're saying that the app won't let them correct their date of birth, which that's wrong. It mm-hmm. will. I've re-uploaded apps all the time, and it it calls it it prompts me to put my date of birth in every single time. I don't remember a time mm-hmm. when they it hasn't done this. So I think that they're 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 they're, li- they're lying about that. So they're a liar. And then the second issue um, is they're trying to troll. For younger yeah. women. Yeah. And they're making up some excuse to uh, the rest of the women out there that, you know, all the app is to blame. But when they, when let's say they say they're 52 years old. So follow me here. This is my logic on this. Let's say they they claim to be 52 years old on the app in the bio. They admit they're really 60. Well, when they claim to be 52 years old and another woman out there on the dating app, let's say she's 45 ish Mm -hmm. and her bandwidth. Yeah. It's going to get fed to that. Yeah. And she says she's interested in a man who is as old as 52, but as young as Mm -hmm. 40, they're going to connect him with her. Yeah. Well, she's going to get the shock of her life when the man, you know. And hopefully she reads the fine print. When she looks at the bio, if they even correct it, because like, well, what knows? he's hoping for yeah. is just that that dopamine dump that right. we get we can get on dating apps. Oh, he's you know he might be a a connection, and then he's got her hooked. That's just that's yeah, where I'm no, coming from on that. You're right, what do you and think? it's just no, I agree with you, and that's kind of what I was saying with manipulating the algorithm. It's just sending it to people to like try to get more connection, but in reality, that's not what they're looking for. So, yeah, who knows, like, how that plays out. I would think that most people aren't going to, like, connect with them for too long, knowing that they're not in the right age range. But maybe, maybe a conversation happens. And I don't know. I say age is just a number, but I do feel like after, like, a 10-year mark, we are in different phases of life. And so it may be harder. Like, I don't see dating somebody who's 40. I'm not saying I would never do it, but I just have... I feel like we are at completely different stages, so it would be hard to connect and relate to a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. So that's just what that's just how I feel. But who knows? Well, age. Okay, let's set, set that aside. You're, how about just telling the truth? Yes, and that's the first <laughs> thing wrong. That's a red flag, that's and that's why you flag. shouldn't connect with those people who are already lying. <laughs> so that so that's my hot take on what I dislike about dating. There's a whole huge list that I have mm-hmm. here, but I want you to go Your now. We can keep going. longer than mine. I mean, I have, well, specific, I'm older too. Yeah. I'm allowed to have longer lists. My, my number one, and it's not, well, most of the time I click away because that is what you're doing. You're shopping around. You try to get a dopamine rush, I guess on dating apps, which is, I don't like them, but, um, I don't like shirtless pics of men. And you've mentioned this, but like, and it's not like you're camping, holding a fish, whatever, but it's like the jockey ones where you're just trying to show off. It is a turn off for me. And they're trying, it's the, they're trying to do the opposite. They're like, oh, look at my body. I'm just like, keep it contained. I don't, it's, it just gives me the ick. Do you know what's the wildest thing about the shirtless pics with the fish is they hold up the tiniest yeah. fish. <laughs> they're not always, yeah, like, not what, always fish, but what, yeah. Are, are you that bad well, i like have the shirtless pick in front of the truck is what i get from oh, you i'm get just that. like I well it's had. just it's all over the map if you have a posting a, sh- a shirtless mirror pick or anything i'm kind of just turned away unless this is like an exception that would probably catch my attention if you have like a dad bod and you're kind of making fun of yourself and you have a sense of humor i could be like okay that's kind of funny but mm. it's also like i'm still just like just keep it contained <laughs> <laughs> keep it off the apps yeah just like it's fine i don't it's it gives i don't like that at all I always thought that dating apps, you should be putting your best face forward. Yeah. (laughs) Not your worst body part online. Like, this is just like, that's just like an error in judgment. But what about, okay, I saw this on uh, Bumble very, very recently, and I I was going to bounce this off of you. I saw a guy, he was, um, of course, he's my age, so this... (laughs) <laughs> just pretend like the guy is your age, Caitlin, because otherwise this seems like gross. But he's he's at the Pacific Ocean or something. I don't know. It's a beautiful ocean backdrop. And he's uh, carrying a surfboard, no shirt. You know, obviously he's got a swimming suit on. Hello. Is that attractive? It's distant. 
of course, I always worry. You think that might know. be different? It's a little different. I don't know. It doesn't seem I like you're like, showing you off the body. You're showing off that. more of the sport. I swiped left. I was like, mm, I don't. You don't get bonus points mm-hmm. for. It shows that you have holding a, a fish hobby, or, though. Yeah. That's, so I, I don't know. I, I do feel a little bit different about that. that. But it's because, like, I had something I had written down is about most of the people I'm connecting with, I'm noticing are like super athletic and outdoorsy, which I love the outdoors. But I'm not like a, a rock climber. I'm not a snowboarder or skier. I'm actually afraid of that because I just, I don't know, it makes me nervous. But th- like, so I to jump shot. Yeah. How about your jump shot? Are you like the next Caitlin Clark? No? No, absolutely not. <laughs> I lo- I'm not athletic in that I can dance. You don't hit a 90 dance mile an hour fastball? Dance is all I've got. No, but... <laughs> dance, okay. Well, but I good. like the outdoors. I like hiking. But like these people, all, all the people I'm seeing are like very sportsy. They ride bikes. And I'm just like, I don't, I think that I would drag you down. <laughs> so that's me. <laughs> but like, I'm, and it was making me think, because I, I saw a picture of a, a man who was rock climbing without a shirt on. Like to me, I was like, you're just rock climbing. Like it's, it's not, you're not trying, maybe he was trying to show off his body, but I don't know. I was just like, I'm seeing so much of that. And it's just making me think about myself. And I mean, it's just maybe not my person or maybe they could get me into a hobby, but I love, I like seeing activities that they, that people can do. And you get bon- bonus points for posting pictures with dogs. That makes me happy. <laughs> so so, so you are attracted to uh, dog pics. Yeah, I mean, I mean, <laughs> okay. it's cute. I don't know. If you're a dog person, you're probably a nice person. <laughs> I love your list so far. What else you got for me? One of my turnoffs is if you're not providing a lot of information in your bio. I think that certain ones can, it can be too much information and maybe you're saving the task for an actual conversation. But I do like to know a little bit more about people and I like to study them because it's how you kind of know if it's worth opening a conversation so if you just kind of say like talk to me and we'll find out if we like each other it might it might work for some people but for me I'm just kind of like I don't want to (laughs) but maybe that's lazy of me no I I agree with you like you are already going to do that if you connect with them but I'm just like let me study you a teeny bit you know (laughs) well I I think they should attempt to at least come close to all of the information that they're putting on the LinkedIn profile or something like you know I want to know more information about a man where we're women at least that's how I feel we're at a disadvantage because we're I am constantly worried about my safety when I'm connecting with perfect strangers and that's what these are and that's how we do it these days and so I'm trying to go all in on this but the idea of connecting with a a perfect stranger who doesn't even want to take the time to use his real name so he smushes together a run-on sentence is his first name lies about his age or tries to make a correction in the pro in the actual profile then doesn't put any information about himself yeah in the day in the in their his dating profile He's either uh, super duper lazy. I'm not interested. Not interested. Yeah. Or um, he's, you know, he's a. It's a fake profile. That's ex- it. Could be. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So I'm with you on that. What about? Let me ask you about this. This has always bugged me when I see the images of men come up on uh, dating profiles. Uh, they there's obviously like wrapped around another woman and he oh, has yeah. her face scratched no, okay. out. Okay, and I honestly have. This is another one I've never really experienced. I think maybe in the past I have seen that. Why? Why would you even do that? Is that the only picture you have of yourself in the light? It's probably outdated. And so it's well, just the I'm only her, picture they had. Yeah, if I'm her, yeah. you know, that's if that was me also show, on an app an, with my face scratched out or a dating profile. Yeah, that's a good I, point. Shows I, how you respect women yeah, you used to be with. I would feel maybe very there's a reason. I don't know, but yeah, it does. It, it makes me feel like, well, I'm next. You know, if I if I end up dating this guy, I'll be the next woman on his dating profile with my face etched out. Right. One thing I I just thought of in dating apps is now, and maybe it's a good thing that they put this out there because it can kind of make a decision quickly. But I don't like it when they're big on politics mm. on their profile. But maybe that's a good thing because then you know, okay. Whatever, I know what I'm getting into this. But, like, if you're posting, like, I don't know, you're wearing shirts and stuff like that in your profile, you have, like, a big, you, you feel know, like Trump you're flag gonna, or something like that end up or, at a, or a Biden flag, whatever You're going to end up is. at a political rally on it's your first date. And I, you can do I that. I would agree. Maybe, it's, maybe that's what some people well, are looking for. I think there's a time and for. place. Yeah, but to me, it's like, I'm not on here to do that. And if you're so passionate about it, it's just my personal preference. I'm not, like, it seems negative. Oh. I, I feel the, the the same way. I'll see uh, men write on their dating profiles, uh, no Trumpers, uh, right, yeah. no, or, or, or no Democrats, yeah. 
Uh, no independence. No snowflakes. Yeah, no. Like so. like, and that's just like, I don't like the talk down of that. And just because I don't, I do think that it is obviously like, there's a different viewpoint there, so they know what they're looking for. But I also think it means that they they aren't open to new perspectives. I look at it like this: when I see some something like that posted, Caitlin, I think I will be judged constantly yeah. for everything that comes out of my mouth. And if it's not politics today, it'll be some opinion mm-hmm. I have later. Um, and I'm pre- I'm a very opinionated as you are. Yeah. Woman, I've been in the news business uh, since 1989, uh, and before that, I worked at my college radio station. So I am really embedded in, um, you know, my you know news and opinions. And we have an opinion uh, news talk show right now, which is an, also an opinion show. I I would. I just would not want to be, um, yeah. you know, cut down every single time something came out of my mouth, mm-hmm. whether it's politics or whether, you know, puppies. I, it feels right. like it's very confrontational right out of the gates. Yeah. And I, I don't, I swipe maybe left. Maybe for some people, for me, it's not what I want. Well, maybe some people are like, what about yeah. religion when they post religion? Because I put that on my dating app. I have it on I'm, mine too. I don't, it's, that's an interesting topic. I don't know. Cause I don't really care. Um, but I, it also, I don't know if they say like they're an atheist, it makes you wonder, but it's like, what does that mean down the road? And that's mm-hmm. something maybe they don't know. Like, what does it mean for your kids? Like, how are they going to be raised? Well, especially I don't know. at your age yeah. where you, I've raised my three kids. And that's something that's, And yeah. so I'm, be, I'm, I don't, I don't think of it in those terms. Like you are having to think about it now. Yeah. And I, I, it is, that's like a big thing for me with dating and why I feel so pressured to date is because I haven't had kids yet, but otherwise I'm totally fine being single, but I know the clock's ticking. So I, I do think about those things and it's just hard. Cause I, I know, I don't know how deep into this one religion or non-religion you're in. I I don't, cause I also, I don't consider myself very religious, but I definitely have like a belief of, you know, something. And I just, it's a, it's a conversation to have. And I think it could go somewhere as long as they're you know, open to it, but it, it's just very interesting to think about how big of a role religion plays in dating for everyone. Universally on apps, dating apps, um, we all hate catfish, these mm-hmm. fake profiles that eventually morph into trying to steal money from us. Can I tell you about how I reeled in and hooked a catfish uh, before he was able to get any further with me? He had me on the line for a few days, convincing me that he lived about five, 10 minutes from my house. And you're not going to believe this is such a wild story. And I'm so proud of myself about how I caught him. Let's talk about that in a few minutes. But Next, let's tackle what men are saying is wrong with women's dating profiles. I gotta know more. <laughs> Welcome back to Dating at Her Age. I'm Caitlin Johnston, joined with my co host, Debbie Dujanovic, and we are talking about the pitfalls of dating apps and why they might suck. <laughs> I loved our previous conversation about all the things we dislike about men's profiles and how we'd love for them to um, improve upon some things. Uh, And I just thought about one more I want to add before we start chatting about women's profiles and what men want to see in those profiles. And that is um, 20 year old pictures. Yeah. Men tend to do this. For me, if it was a 20 year old picture, it'd be like a five year old. (laughs) I get what you're saying. Some people could put their like high school senior photo, younger 20s because we're we're getting 30s. But yeah, Yeah, yeah. for me, for me. Yeah, it's they're in the mid 30s and you'd be shocked. You'd be shocked how often I see this. I wish men would be true to themselves. Nobody's aging backwards. We're not Benjamin Buttons. Mm -hmm. You know, we're we're I think having some gray in your hair, maybe you're, it's all gray, it, you know, you've lost your hair, who cares? Yeah, you're going to see Just the real yourself. thing eventually, which is how I feel about like filters on social media. They make things so believable, like for women and men too, but primarily women, the filters that can be used are scary. But yeah, be true to yourself. And that's one of the top things for men when they they look at our dating profiles. And I'm trying to read up on this because I'm trying to improve my dating profile because I've gotten no traction. I've I'm been... sure you're fine. I don't think you're the problem, but we could be. We need <laughs> self-accountability, but I think that Ugh. it's I, a shallow field. Well, I'll, I've not had some great luck and in a moment. We're going to, I'm going to divulge to my catfish problem on, on, on Bumble not too long ago. But um, it, here's, here's the, here's the, one of the top things that men say, and this is from your tango.com. 
I've actually used this site from time to time for advice. Um, it hasn't gotten me very far, but I still <laughs> I still go back and read uh, their their suggestions. Um, men say, first of all, good pictures are key. I kind of think that's a no duh. I think we know that, right? But dump the filters, ditch the Snapchat or other filters that you're using. And I love that they said that. Yeah, the men I are mean, saying that. Why? I mean, I think it goes both ways, right? We just said that previously. We don't like when men do that. Women shouldn't be doing it either. So, and then like and more filters of just like whether it's the scuba diving thing or just like glamorizing your face for women is going to make you seem like you look a different way when you don't. And I actually really don't like that because I see so many people, my friends use these filters and it's obvious because I know what they look like in person, but people who haven't met them aren't going to know that. How about this one? Include fewer friends in your photos, please. I think if That's it's, what this says. Include if it fewer is, friends in your photos, Is it please. because they're confused on which one they like the best? But yeah. if you're posting a picture, multiple of yourself, and there's one friend photo, I think that's fine. But if it's the only ones you're doing, that's a problem. It says, having your very first picture be a group picture of you and your friends. It's wonderful that you have friends that you <laughs> do things with. But if I see a group picture, this comes from a man, I automatically am going to assume that you're the least attractive one. That's rude. <laughs> Why? That's actually, that's rude. What do you mean? <laughs> what? That's, how, that's what he said. Is that because know. he can't keep his eyes off of anybody else and he just wants to shop around to them? That's said, interesting. But let's, let's get some more context. It goes on to say there's nothing wrong with not being as attractive as your friends, but the fact that you're trying to hide how you look means that you're already starting the potential relationship off with dishonesty. I guess I get that as a confidence thing. But maybe the, I think if we want men it. to lean into that. our suggestions, yeah. we probably ought to not fight their suggestions. I'm not fighting it. I'm just confused. But I get I get that a little bit. Is it's like okay, if you're only posting a group picture, that makes that doesn't make sense to me. But yeah, I I, I get it. I don't like it when men post multiple photo or pictures with multiple people in it. First of all, I don't know which one they are. Right. And I I I'm more interested in getting to know them. If if it works out, I'll get to know your friends. Yeah. That's you know, your, your, your shirtless fishing buddy friends. We'll all get to know each other at some, at some point down the road if this works mm-hmm. out. But for right now, I just want to know who you are. Yeah. Oh, here's one. Proofread. Use good grammar. <laughs> yeah, that's one that And we'll punctuation. <laughs> and it says, I know it's not fair, but when, whenever I, I saw a poorly written profile, I'd think, she's an idiot. Not worth my time. Well, that's right. Wow, right that's Right back harsh. at you, men. Right back at you, men, though, because mm-hmm. how many times I see things like that. There it's true. And, and there. I give people the benefit of the doubt. You know, it's whatever. They... I see there yeah. and there, T H E I R, or they misuse it, the T H E R E. Yeah. And I'm like, oh. I mean, it's a little bit of a nick, but it's I'm also like, they can learn. Silly, as long it? as they can learn, and that's fine. <laughs> Keep it positive. This is what men want to see out of women's dating profile. Keep it positive. Stay away from the no's in your profile narrative. Oh. What is it? The no jerks or no players sort of thing. I, in your okay, profile. I can see that because it is already like going for an attack. Like, it says when a woman mentions the negative, it shows her as someone who's Bitter. had a life take had the life taken out of her. Well, we probably have. Oh my gosh, that sounds so, so deep. Listen, you can't be that critical of people who have been hurt. Number one, but you're going to end up learning that story eventually. So, but if it's the first impression, I could I could see that. Like, keep yeah, don't be mean. I but. think I think we still have to go to back to the. Let's not be defensive about what men are right. saying about I know, our sorry, dating I'm just profiles. I'm, learning, about I'm actually that. learning for this. I, I, I understand that I can that be kind of negative. I think the news business drags us down. We can be, you know, kind of uh, feel like there's it, hopeless at times because we do yeah. tend to be in the newsroom where there's a lot of negativity going on. I'm, I'm going to go back and reread my profile and see I, if I can make some changes. Flipping the script and reading, like if I was reading a men's profile, it's like they said like no blondes. I'd be like, well, that's rude of you. <laughs> Like, so I, I get that. You don't want to put like, like negative energy out on the first read. I, I understand that. Um, just be yourself. I like that. Just, I am. Just be genuine. Totally myself on dating apps. I've recently changed. I used to have a picture because I cared so less about what people thought about me of when I just, it's me making fun of myself. of just like, I woke up one morning and my hair was in a messy bun and like sticking up all over my face. And I was just, I accidentally took it. It was on my dating profile because I was just like, if they want to know me, this is literally the real me. It's what I look like when I wake up. And it was a mess of a photo. <laughs> but I am so I'm happy you did that. I would never authentic. do that. I have, it's gone now because I have more pictures of myself kind of. And it was so, so many years ago. I look different now. But yeah, it, I just kind of don't care. And I'm almost, I could probably be too much and too authentic. For well, when people. I said that, I was like, well, I would never do that. Well, maybe I need to be more authentic that way where it doesn't look quite so. I, 
stage part of my i mean my photos yeah i guess i have a mix of photos on mine i have one that's like a a selfie that's a little more natural and then i have some of the ones that like i've taken with my friends that are more professional but it's not it's a mix to because i they don't all look like that but part of the reason i did that was because i feel like i am a unique human and the human who is going to match with me is going to have that sense of humor so i if they see that and they match with me i'm going to know that they are okay with it (laughs) here's a final one and i I think you've done some things on your dating profile that I'm jealous of because uh, you've done this originality. That's probably how, part you, of it. What have you done that's I just, more original? Give us some clues. I just updated my Hinge profile this week because you kind of assigned I me did. to do I, that. I, because I did. Because I really don't like getting back on them. But I've been. Well, it's I more of like a, a I don't on think, and off I, for me. I didn't think it was fair to say yeah. we host a brand new <laughs> no, uh, dating podcast and yet we're. You know, we're sitting in the back of a Barnes and Noble, hoping that I just Mr. Wright walks in. The times in. to change. I want to. I want to be like You're Gen not, Z okay. and get the meat cute, but I am a hopeless person. Okay. <laughs> you, it, you, let's not try to change the world. Let's just try to I know. use the tools I that we re- have wisely. It. So, how is? How, give us a well. One, tip one picture on that I actually took. I took off. I, I could put it back on, but I have these pictures that I took during Halloween where I have these creepy contacts in, and I really loved the pictures. Oh, I remember you came to um, work in the creepy yeah, contacts. Yeah, I've worn them a few, awesome. few times, but this one was like, I actually got a photo shoot done like with smoke and stuff like that, and I just thought they were cool. And so it is kind of a part of my personality, it. and it's the weirder part of it. So I had, the, it's not on there now, but I could, I sometimes go you back and it. forth putting, oh, it's, it was on there for like you experiment since with that I again. started it, but to, I had more pictures, so I was like, I'm just going to change these. But oh, I just took I it off this. like two days ago. I so, love it. I mean, it's just another way to filter out people. I like that idea. It's yeah. not your main picture. No. No. <laughs> it's not your main picture. My main is just picture. a selfie of me. Yeah. Like a, a neutral selfie, but yeah. I, I, I don't, oh, I just, I like that idea. And I was just thinking, I don't think I put, um, here's my mind wandering. I don't think I put pictures of me and my kids either i was just gonna ask do you do that but is there a no. reason you do or don't because like is that a I don't safety think I, thing I, or? I don't i don't have any now i and i was off dating apps for a long time too until just a few months ago again um i just in general no uh, my kids are adults too i want to make that clear mm-hmm. this isn't like i would i don't now i do I do see men put them on their kids on there and i do appreciate it because i one of my dating don'ts is I won't date men with young kids. I won't mm-hmm. date men with kids that are under the age of 18. We'll talk about that in another episode because I feel like that needs a full explanation um, as to why I stopped uh, dating men with young kids. Uh, when the last guy I went out with, he was my age and he had an eight-year-old. I just said, uh, that's a whole nother, whole nother episode. Uh, I don't do it, but I do put in the embedded in the, the, the bio part. I say, you know, I, I, always say I love spending time with my three adult children something to that effect Uh, I don't put ages 27 26 and 24 you know Mm -hmm. I don't put I don't I I don't put that but I say my adult children or uh, other thing I do put on there is loving the empty nester life yeah that's great something like that so they know I don't know I think it's fair and I think it's right to put on your dating profile that, um, and, and Bumble does this, like have kids. So you can pick Hinge. that. Hinge yeah. does that too. I haven't been on Hinge in a while. Um, have kids, don't want more. I always f- find it interesting that men will put on there sometimes. I think it's by mistake because they get kind of, you know, they can't figure out how to use the app or something like that. They'll put, um, so, there's some sort of prompt on it when they're, you know, they're 65 years old or something. Open to kids. Yeah. I'm like, well, I'm sorry. Yeah. Maybe they mean open to like the your idea kids? of you having Maybe, kids. I, guess. I, I would think like, that's what that means. But that I don't ain't going to work out for us. I'm long beyond that I phase. I would imagine that's what that means. I always get confused age. by that. I don't I'm know like, either. Mm, you don't know how to use the app. I'm going to swipe left. <laughs> I don't, and as a rule of thumb, to answer your question, put my photos of my kids on there. I see sense. men do it. I do see yeah, a lot of men I do it. I see both sides as to why you do that. I see a lot of profile or not profile, but uh, photos on their dating profiles. We'll see them walking their daughter down the aisle. Yeah. They're important uh, moments. Oh, they'll people. put their yeah. grandkids, their young grandkids. The, I, young, that one, the young grandkids, yeah. it's a safety thing for me, but also they're probably just giving you the full picture. So. I don't have grandkids, but I can tell you if I did, they would not be on yeah. a picture of me, you know, bouncing them on my lap on my dating profile. Right. I mean, that yeah. to me is after getting my kids permission of posting maybe on Facebook or an mm-hmm. Instagram, but... I'm 
I, I, I yeah, I would not be posting Something my grandkids. That will come up in That's conversation. Just, to me, later. that doesn't seem like my lane to be doing. Now they may have full permission, but I, I, as a rule, don't don't do that. I don't, I don't feel comfortable posting my kids on, on on my dating profile. They're posted all over my social media. So if we, you know, I end up yeah. connecting with a guy ever, they can see plenty of photos of my kids. And if it works out, they'll meet them. But let me meet my awesome kids one day. Uh, I want to talk about how I busted a catfish. It was brilliant. It was probably one of my best moments ever on the dating app. Can we talk about that? Yes, please. Next. Welcome back to Dating at Her Age. It's Debbie and Caitlin. And I caught a catfish, Caitlin, on Bumble not too long ago. And I felt it was one of my most brilliant moments yet. I used technology uh, to do it. Uh, catfish we don't like them online because we know those are fake profiles but they try to convince mainly women actually women are more likely to be catfished on dating apps and online and even on social media than men and they target the age group they target is women 40 and over who are divorced Mm -hmm. like me clearly or even widowed yeah well it makes it makes sense because i think they people are trying to pick at the vulnerability that may be there for older women who have been divorced and maybe just looking for a new connection so i could see how that could happen some not everybody but yeah i and i think people my age can feel a little bit desperate too but i could see the vulnerability there so this guy had me on the hook big time he was reeling me in he had me convinced he lived about five ten minutes from my house um that he was out always helping his neighbors i thought this he's such a sweet soul Mm -hmm. that he had uh, grown kids like I do uh, in their 20s, late 20s. I thought this is getting better. That he was semi retired, that he'd had a successful career about my age. I'm like, this is awesome. When, when can we meet? The first red flag of any fake profile or somebody who's trying to reel you in to eventually pounce on you for money, um, I'll get to that in a second, is they always put off meeting. Mm-hmm. And well, yeah, big so, red flag. So he was going to ask me out for coffee. And then he was going to ask me out for coffee. And then he was going to ask me out for coffee. And then he was going to He kept telling me this um, over the over the messaging part of Bumble. And I was like, well, this sounds great. And he kept blowing me off. Yeah, and that's, I mean, you, good for catching that and that trend. Because if you're not interested in pursuing that, just you're wasting time anyways. And he's just They just don't ever want to meet in person. Did he ever like reach out about a phone call or anything like that? He wanted my cell phone number. He wanted my cell phone number, uh, but never a phone call. Never actually talked to him. Yeah. Never talked to him. Within a week or two, I was starting to get the message that something was really off with this guy. Even though he sounded like Mr. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, he was probably operating from a basement in a foreign country, just waiting to make up some story that he had been swept away into a foreign prison and he needed me to Mm -hmm. wire bail money. So what I did is I went, um, I, I spent 20 minutes staring at his location on the Bumble app because you can track their, right? You can see it right there. Mm -hmm. And in 20 minutes, he had gone from Utah to a cornfield in Nebraska to somewhere on the East coast. And then somehow he ended up like in Florida. So I don't know for sure because I'm not a tech expert. He was either using a VPN, Mm -hmm. which can tech, you know, they can switch their location to go to different parts of the world at any time. Um, I don't think he was, you know, flying about the country. I mean, he's not Superman, no. right? I mean, no. it's just like he's just... He was just shopping using, around yeah, different, in different areas. In different areas. Virtually, yeah. And then I also learned in researching this, they can use GPS apps to somehow um, fake their locations or switch mm-hmm. locations. Uh, the other thing that was very lucky is, for me is that he had offered to send me a, fo- a, a recent photograph of himself. And I, I think this is so key. This is so key. If they offer to send you a photograph, get information from them. Like, oh, where did you take? Yeah. When did you take this? And when did you take it? Like, where was this mm-hmm. taken? And they tell you where it was taken and when because they're wanting to, you know, share all this information with you. And then I downloaded that picture to my camera roll, and, and look at the metadata. It, yes, mm-hmm. like who invented this metadata? It, it was amazing. Great. Yeah. So all I did was 
Well, I think it's probably different. How do you look at your metadata? You, well, on the iPhone, you just swipe up on the picture after you download it. That's what it's I, pretty much there. Yeah. I, that's what I did. I either swipe down or I pulled down or something. I was able to see right away that he was totally lying about that photo. Yeah. That's interesting. I've actually, I never look at that, but I should start doing that more. Oh, I love it that yeah. I gave you a tip. Yeah. That's well, good. Well, I knew that you could do that. I just don't think about it in that, like, well, I've never thought about it that way. I, I, I think I'll do this all the time now. Yeah. I think I'll do this all the time. So I was able to figure out that this guy is either he's either, either he's totally lying to me about everything or it's a fake profile and he just wants to, you know, reel me in for money at some yeah. point. And that's what how that works. The catfishing schemes work. It's get to know her. Uh, she gets all emotionally wrapped up in, in the, the, the profile, the guy, and then he never meets and then it's, oh, I can't meet you because I'm stuck in a prison in some third world country and they're going to kill me if I don't give them bail money. Can you send me $5,000? Yeah. Happens all the time. Don't, and don't fall for that. But yeah, like some pe- some people may. Well, they're falling may. for it because yeah. they feel like there's this amazing right. emotional collect- connection. And the reason it works is because yeah, be- because uh, because they're playing on their hearts. Yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense. And it makes me sad that people do that, but. I'm sad that you weren't more excited that I. <laughs> no, I was excited. I'm excited. You gave so much more info. You got so much information out to so many people, including me. Like just for, like I didn't. I've never actually like sat and looked at people's locations on the apps, which because I've never experienced anything like that specifically. Well, but it makes now me sound I like a creep, and I do. I felt like a creep. Well, good for you for doing it though. You should. But I have 20 smart. minutes on They're my not hands. Smarter than you. Like I was, <laughs> and I was being. I was bugged that he would never meet, and and. And I was like, I'm a, this guy's got to be a catfish. How yeah. can I prove it? And so I went to the location, and it just flipped like that. Every time I refreshed the app, he was in a new yeah, that's really part of the world good or information the United to States. Check if you're, like, focused on one specific person. Yeah. I I reported him. I reported <laughs> him to the app. <laughs> Did you're they welcome. do anything about it? I don't know. <laughs> I report I'm like, I'm, that's it. I'm reporting you. I'm reporting you. This I'm is a good him. lesson, though, because I don't. I feel like it's so easy, and people may not be paying attention to the fine print. Like, Question everything. I think on the dating apps. I oh, just I, know. I sometimes they're they're all they're legit and maybe it's more often than not. But I'm just that's another thing. I don't feel safe on them. I don't know. Like, you never know what you're getting. I'm most proud of this is that I hope I saved another woman. Hopefully, think twice and ask for help if you need it. <laughs> like because it's not everyone's going to be techno technological I'm, savvy. I'm all I'm I'm all about you know bonding together as women and protecting other women from fake profiles or horrible men on dating apps and i was like i cannot report this man fast enough and i reported him i think you know you're welcome you're welcome ladies uh i don't even know what ever happened i don't know that bumble sent me a message but i hope they banned him and all of his other fake profiles okay caitlin it is time for what i'm sure is going to become our favorite part of the entire show our dater hater segment i am so excited for this because i want to hear from all of you i want to hear the tea i want to hear the bad dating stories the horror stories you can share the good stories if you want but i really want to know the tea (laughs) you can ask us questions as well but we just yeah we're excited to hear from you the best way to get a hold of us uh, is 801-575-5599 again 801-575-5599 and leave us a voicemail message we might play it back on the air yep and we've got our first one right now okay let's listen Hey, Deb and Caitlin. I have a dater hater story for you. I had been messaging with this guy that I had connected with on a dating app. We had not yet met in person, but had been pretty consistently texting back and forth for a couple of weeks. In one of the last messages that we exchanged, he had mentioned that the reason he broke up with his last girlfriend was because she had gained a little weight. Uh, that is a that is a red flag for me and so the next day I messaged him back and it was very kind but said hey I don't think that we're a good fit but thanks for taking the time to chat with me and best of luck in the future he wrote back whatever you fat cow what <laughs> what <laughs> what <laughs> double what uh, I did not message him back because you don't want to rattle the bear cage But uh, I thought to myself, huh, thank you for confirming that, in fact, we are not a good match. Oh, my goodness. He's Uh, projecting. (laughs) uh, This is what angry men do. And actually, um, I'm glad she figured that out 
right up front. They've been messaging back and forth. And also, so glad she stood up for another woman. I believe in women supporting women in everything we do, whether it's our careers, uh, parenting, our dating lives. And so she was standing up for the other one. She saw the writing on the wall. You you got to get out. You got to disconnect right away. Uh, she did that. And then she saw what this man was really all about. When somebody shows you who they are, mm-hmm. believe them the first yeah, time. Yeah, believe them. And I personally think this had nothing to do with her. It was just him projecting or he, he felt offended that she maybe wasn't super into him or whatever there. And he just decided to go go for the jugular as, and find the most something that women may be very insecure about and just attack because he has nothing better. So it was, I think it's projecting on either insecurities on himself or just the fact that he wasn't secure in, our, in the fact that anybody wanted to be with him. <laughs> yeah, that dater hater moment takes me back a couple of years when I went out on a first date with a guy. I felt absolutely no connection. We were totally different places in our lives. I, I don't not really interested in a second date. And when I sent him a text message of telling him that after I'd gotten home, he unloaded mm-hmm. on me. I woke up to a string of really nasty text messages where he used all kinds of foul language, uh, called me all kinds of weird, horrible names. And he showed me who he really was. I'm like, I'm yeah. done. I'm done. And um, I'm glad she got out well, yep. you know, right away. Showing off the insecurities. So. All right, so we're both haters. Uh, yeah, yeah well, we hate that kind of stuff, I right? I would hate that for sure. Don't be mean. Don't be rude. Don't attack people. Share your date or hater stories with us. 801-575-5599. Leave us a voicemail. We'd love to play it back on our podcast. Yep. And on our next episode, we are going to look into how to get off the apps and go dating in the wild. We'll talk to a psychologist, Tom Golightly, about tips on how to do that. Our phones are a vehicle. They're not the end point. And so oh. many people use these dating apps and it's like, well, I'm, I am dating but you're not. You're not really dating when you're on the dating app. The rest of what Dr. Tom Golightly had to say about dating apps will change your view about how you use them. That's next time on Dating at Her Age.